more than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase we're going to be talking about none other than of course Generation 1 Optimus Prime. But before I talk about him I want to say a big big thank you to Rudy Zizou and for anybody who's watching this at a later date, not live right now, today I was lucky enough and honoured enough, privileged to take part again in Bots at Home which was an online convention done in the UK. Uh, because we had no conventions obviously due to lockdowns and all things like that so I want to say a big thank you to Rudy Zizou for again organising it totally off his own back I want to say a huge thank you to all the fellow YouTubers who were before this video and there's a few more coming afterwards as well so thank you ever so much for letting me be a part of this so on with this particular video and basically I wanted to honour the privilege of being able to do this by doing a sort of special video so you can see behind me we've got quite a few Optimus Primes um, I've been asked a few times actually as well how many Optimus Primes I've got and will I do a video on it and I you know I really felt that today would be the best opportunity to do it so I've got the Optimus Prime t-shirt on ready and of course we've got Optimus Prime so before we have a look at these just a little bit of an intro people who know me and know the channel they obviously know that my favorite actual toy and I suppose character is Scorponok but this guy's an incredibly close second you know but I suppose it's cliche for everybody to say they love Optimus Prime and I and I do I do I still genuinely love this figure I'd love to say that this was my original one when I was a child but I was daft enough in 1992 to to sell them on but since being an adult collector obviously he's it, still Optimus Prime he's still fantastic so what I want to do with today's video is basically um, again I was lucky enough my mum went she traveled she did a full day trip to go and get me Optimus Prime for Christmas so literally she drove three hours she went to a toy shop she drove three hours back and I was lucky enough to have Optimus Prime for Christmas 1984 so what I've got behind me and there's just a couple over there which you can't see because they're loose I've got 16 different completely different variants of Optimus Prime um, I'm going to show you the differences I'm going to basically just in a way, I suppose, show you what it was like for other people around the world and in different countries, what it was like for them to get their Optimus Primes. Because um, some of them, even though it's Generation 1, some of them weren't released till 1985 due to licensing issues, safety issues, things like that. I'm going to talk briefly about them, hopefully not into too much depth and, you know, making it boring. But my intention is to show you all of these uh, up close, the differences, like for those of you who are unaware, the Takara one, the Japanese one, has a super launcher where it just literally rockets the... Um, roller rock, rockets roller off the track straight off um goodbye convoy's got different tinted windows gig had licensing issues with the fact that they couldn't have fiery missiles so they had to put something else in but without going into too much detail and without you know without further ado let's get started with this i'm going to go behind the camera and we're going to start off with the pretty much the one that everybody in the uk me including myself got straight away so let's crack on with this and let's look at optimus prime number one Okay then, here we go. There he is, the quite simply and beautiful and of course very simplistic original Generation 1 Optimus Prime. So this was a Sage Ape Optimus Prime and this was the most popular one in UK and a bit of Europe. So for those of you who are interested, this is the T2 trailer, which I'm just going to pop there for a second. And then here is, again, the lovely but very basic cab. Things to be aware of if you have to one of these for yourself is the tyres are rubber, the wheels inside are chrome, same as the fuel tanks and the smokestacks, and of course the grill. The transformation is so simple, but it makes it even better for playing with. Some of these new toys now where you've got 30 odd steps, that must, you know, that must surely take some of the play factor away from it. And that was as simple as that. We folded the legs down, we folded the arms out, and we've got Optimus Prime. Now, we had to actually have his fists, so left and right, these were lost very, very quickly by some people. I remember a few friends always losing the fists and having to borrow or try and get others. So we're going to pop that there. And the gun, which is this, this is his gun. And ironically enough, you can never point this straight just because of the way that it was manufactured and it just won't go over his forearm. So it always, always had had to go there then we've got the trailer and there's a couple of ways you can use this we can fold out these arms like so the door will come down and then what we've got is the deck where we can pull this up pull the radar up if i just move optimus prime over there 
and into position. We do have roller and you had to actually put these six wheels on yourself. I'll show you some other Optimus Primes in a second where they're not made. And then we had a launching mechanism at the back, which literally for the old Optimus Primes, not the Japanese one, which I'll show you in a second, it didn't, as you can see, really launch. That's all it was, an incredibly small movement. For the rest of the parts that came with him, we had the attachments ready for the fuel pump and of course the hose. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be referring to these throughout the video, because this is in my eyes, the standard Optimus Prime. So with what you're gonna see now with the rest of the video, you're going to see different variants and I'm gonna show you all the different ones as well. One other thing I just realized I forgot to show you was of course the repair arm and that will come around on the side there. These missiles fired a little bit, but not too far. So, as I said, this is the standard one for most people, sort of in Europe and especially in the UK. What I'm going to do now, then the next and the Optimus Prime variant I'm going to be showing you is the Aerobox first release uh, version. And I'm going to be discussing with you and showing you why it's the Aerobox and why the parts are different. Okay, coming back with Optimus Prime number two. Okay then, so we're back and this is what's known as the Aerobox bloated Optimus Prime variant. Now this is one of the earliest releases of Optimus Prime in a Transformers box and I'm going to show you the reasons why in two seconds. Before that I just want to give you a very brief history. Obviously before he was Optimus Prime he was known as Battle Convoy and he was released in August of 1983. Now I don't own any Diaclone figures because that's just another avenue I don't really want to go down but there he is there and you can see it says Diaclone on the trailer but what the important thing you need to be looking at here is these three pilots so with Diaclone they basically piloted the machines that they were in so for Optimus Prime he would they would of course have drivers in the cab and here they are these are the little drivers you can see this is Transformer Land by the way which we're looking at but the important thing is they had magnets on their feet so it was completely interactive again it was like a whole full play set and basically and again as I said I'm going to be keeping referring to the old Optimus Prime that I've got so this is the standard one here that I had and you can see in the trailer here, there's just the metal bar underneath. There's nothing else. There's no holes cut out here at all. But with the error box, and I'll show you what the error is in a second, you can see that there's extra holes. I'm going to take this out in a second so you can see. And can you see that there's metal behind it? There's metal plates all behind it. And the reason for that is so that the little pilots could, of course, be used as a play set when the trailer's opened. So this is, again, this is basically taken from the Diaclone mold. And again, it must've been maybe rushed or no proper checks were done because there is the error. So what that is there, that is the satellite dish from the underside. So obviously with all the newer boxes, you won't find that at all. So for example, this is just the standard Hasbro, which I've got the figure out ready. There's no error there at all. They've corrected it. So that is why it's referred to as the error box. And this is the metal plate bloated version. And again, this is considered to be probably one of the rarest Optimus Primes because it is a very, very first release. So if you were lucky enough to have one of these, you may have had this before Christmas 1984. So the weight of the figure is much, much more so because the trailer has metal plates in it. And as I quickly just mentioned, you've got the slightly, you've got the different colored roller as well. So we've got the silver roller We've got the instruction booklet, which is all still exactly the same. Anybody remember this with the instructions? Basically, what that's telling you what to do to turn it around and push the trailer out. So the instruction book's pretty much exactly the same as all your Hasbro. You've just got the silver roller there. And of course, there's no mention of a rub sign because it wasn't on these at all. You've also got as well, and I don't actually own this, you can see that the parts there are light blue that's something else that's another variant that i don't actually have right so let's have a look at first and foremost let's show you what i mean by bloated parts so it sounds quite obvious but when you see it it's crazy so this is the bloated gun it is exactly that it is completely bloated here is the standard gun see how the barrel is much much thicker everything's much thicker with the bloated part so there's the bloated one, I'll keep these separate. I'm gonna be referring back to the old ones all the time. There is the bloated nozzle and fuel pump, etc. 
there is the standard one it's just everything's just much fatter just much fatter with it all there's the bloated thick dowels on there and then of course the much thinner one here so that's what it's referring to with bloated parts it's much more noticeable with these though with these it's much more noticeable. these are lovely and thick really thick compared to your standard ones there we go so that's what the bloated parts refer to as so the metal plates which we've seen are inside there so when i carefully push this out like it does say so what to do in the thing in fact what i'm going to do to make it even easier i'm going to turn it completely upside down and push it out so this is the big big main differences with this now as you can tell i probably hardly ever take this out of the box it's just caught in there and so for those of you who want to know there is zero there's no markings in there for trailer at all and again this is really really weighty it really is heavy because inside there are metal plates and again i don't have any diaclone pilots there's no other differences inside it's just the fact that this is now full of metal so that the diaclone pilots and little men they could stand on here as well as go inside this and these chairs etc there so what we're looking for in the metal plates trailer is exactly that the metal plates are through there right with regards to the actual cab there's no other differences at all it's just your standard optimus prime cab okay there we go that was optimus prime metal plates variant let's move on to i suppose what 95 percent of my viewers might have had the standard hasbro release so coming back to you with that one right now one quick other thing i want to point out to you before we go into the hasbro and that's just because i've noticed it myself of course there was no rub sign so at the top and this is something you hardly ever see there's just a screw there obviously this is covered normally by the rub sign so there is a difference with the cab and that's just the fact that we don't have the rub sign okay coming back with hasbro right now okay then so here we are variant number three this is the hasbro standard version so this one we're going to have a look at everything that came with this all the paperwork all the catalogs everything um i believe this to be the most common of the variants that's released so that's exactly the reason why i want to do this just to hopefully bring back some nice memories for you guys so we'll spin it around to the back and what we've got is this is how you know there we go we've got 1984 hasbro bradley inc and then we've got of course the address there i will just quickly show you the error box quickly because i didn't show you the back of that but that also was hasbro as well but it wasn't in a highlighted box right back to this one then so i'm not going to do the transformation process because i've already done it i'm just going to show you some of the differences between the ones that we've seen but before we do let's look at that beautiful beautiful battle scene there on the back so we now know this is to be mainly the diaclone toy line obviously or wave or series one as we know of these particular figures if we spin it around we've got a price sticker on the side i don't recognize this price sticker from anywhere in the uk but i don't know if that's dollars or of um or pounds it does say exclusive of vat and you very rarely see anything like that in the uk so it could be an american um price sticker obviously we've got no error on the box just a stunning figure isn't it so let's have a look inside and again let's hopefully bring back some nice memories for everybody who had this or was opening this in 1984 so what we've got i'm going to open this in a second just to show you the trailer number and things like that rollers actually hiding inside the trailer but what i've got with this is all of the bump all of the paraphernalia that came with it so here we go let's go trip down memory lane we'll start with the sticker sheet so that would have been used for the cab this is for the floor of the trailer obviously these are of course right in front of you there it is for the side of the cab we have got another one of these, which is telling us how to push it out, which we're going to do in two seconds. It's crazy that it used to, this used to be bright white, but the colour of it has obviously started to fade. And then with these, you add the instructions again. Lovely full colour because it's 1984. And then all the parts again. And then what you would have had is something bonus, maybe like this. An advert for the Lumo bots or maybe an advert for the special teams, the cassettes that came out and let's have a quick oh there's the tech spec decoder of course 
And then one of the best things about Series 1 was this particular little catalogue. It's only small, it's only tiny, but it's brilliant. There are the Decepticons. Look at that brilliant picture. There are the Autobots. And then you've got a teeny little story here. So if I bring this there, and if you, yeah, there you go. If I hold it there, if I, you can pause that now and read that for yourself if you wanted to. So this is some brilliant bit of artwork. Again, remember these are all drawings. None of these are photos. We'll spin it round. We've got, as I said, series one. So there's the Autobots. The only thing sticking or standing out to me there is that Cliff Jumper is yellow. Here are the Decepticons. They all look fine to me as well. And then there's that lovely picture again. So this was the very first catalogue with wave. Well, we call them waves now, but back then it was known as Series 1. That is the Series 1 catalogue that would have come with it. Let's quickly just pop this down. Oh, that's fell out. I haven't need to push it out. Here's all the parts that came with it. You've seen all the parts. Um, right, what have we got here? So let's have a look. Oh, that's roller rolling around in the bottom. So here, this is a T4 trailer. And there's huge Hasbro writing right there. I've not, as I say, I've kept roller in there. Nothing any different. There we all are. Let's put this back then. And we're going to move on from the standard Hasbro to the Canadian variant. So coming back to you with that one right now. Okay, here we are. Optimus Prime number four. And this is the Canadian variant. It's not, unfortunately, the Canadian Pepsi Prime. That would be something else. But obviously, this is just, it's still just as good because I just love the variant. So you can see here we've got the two languages at the bottom. So we've got Commandant Autobot and Autobot Commander, Optimus Primo. We've got the dual languages there, of course, English and the French. And then, of course, at the top. And then, of course, we've got the dual language there as well along the top. If we spin it around, everything else looks to be exactly the same until of course we come to the tech spec, which is much enlarged, it's huge, it's massive compared to a standard tech spec. And then we've got the brilliant little bump, the writing that they used to say with them all, it, you know, is a world of the Transformers where things are not what they seemed. I just like the fact that they've added that on the back. The standard Hasbro one was hidden away in the corner there and the French Sorry, the, yeah, the Canadian one. There's an idea for you to see of just the difference in the size of the tech specs and the writing. Okay, Hasbro one's going back. Let's have a look inside the actual figure. We're going to have a look at the trailer number and we're going to see if there's anything else that's slightly different. Oh, the robot pointer on the bottom as well. There we go. Obviously, with them being no space in the back. This is, there you go, Hasbro Canada. So that's where it was released, made rather. But of course, on the back, it'll say that it came from Japan and Takara originally. So there we go. Right, let's get him out nice and carefully. I wonder if I should have gloves on when I'm doing this. Right, so here we go. This one is beautiful. This is hardly touched at all. So there is your roller before you put the wheels on him. There again is all the rest of the parts. Previous owners really looked after this. Let's have a look at the actual figure. And yeah, you can tell this is hardly played with. Right, let's stand this up. So the Canadian trailer is... Is that a five? Yep, that's a number five there. And there's your different stamp. Let's have a quick look inside. There's nothing in there, obviously, because roller's out there. And what I've gotten, what I've noticed here is there's this sticker here on the Canadian one. I've not noticed that on any of the others, whether that's a, a special difference. I'm not too sure, but I've definitely not noticed that on any of the others. It could just have been, let's be honest, it could just have been a kid who put it on and it shouldn't be there. But that's the only differences that I've found with this particular Canadian variant. Obviously, the languages are different and... Again, it's just it's just nice to have a nice different box. And this is what it would have been like if you were Canadian to wake up and have an Optimus Prime. Right, that's him quickly looked at. Let's move on to mainland Europe now with version number five. 
Right then, here we go. Optimus Prime number five. So this is the version that if you lived mainly in mainland Europe, mainly in Holland, Netherlands, that sort of area, this will be the version that you'd have seen. That's because this is the Sage 8 four language variant. And the four languages on it are English, Dutch, French and Spanish. So you've got four languages there telling how to transform him. You've also got, as I say, the main language there is Dutch with the English. That's why, again, this was found mainly in the Netherlands. Um, and again, that's the main language on here. So on the back, we've got the giant tech specs again and then the description of what they are. But because obviously there's no other space where you would find all the information where it was made is underneath again. And again, we've got here that it's made in France by Sage under license from Takara. So the main difference with this, of course, is just the box. Now, the interesting thing when we look inside is the catalog. So the catalog on these, these come out a bit later. Again, they had to sort out all the licensing um, and just, you know, I suppose, get permission to get it out. So when we look at the catalog, the catalog has got a few extra figures in, which are sneaking into what we know as series two. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at that first because the instructions which we've got here are, of course, going to mirror the box. So we've got the four language instructions all the way along, even though the transformation is still exactly the same. It's just the fact that we've got these four languages on and there we are where it's discussing and telling you how to use the tech spec. So that's the difference, obviously, with instructions because they need to be able to understand it. But the catalogue that came with it, this is really interesting. And this is very similar to an MB variant, which we can look at later because, again, it's mainland Europe. So what we've got here with this catalogue and for those of you unaware, Jetfire um, nearly, according to MB history, was going to be the Autobot commander. So Optimus Prime isn't on here. Jetfire is the first character there, which you can see. You've got a different variant of Blaster there. We've got a different chest colour. We've got the Dinobots who've appeared, but we've got the Canadian red-faced slag there, so that's slightly different. And you can see we've got a few of Series 2. Not all of them, just a few of Series 2 Autobots. And with the Decepticons as well in a second, I'll turn it round. So this is basically just crossing over in from Series 1 into Series 2, because on the other side, we've got... Megatron and Soundwave. We've got the Wave 2 of the Jets. But have a look at Blitzwing there. Look at the completely different colours we've got there. We haven't got Octane because he was also released a bit later. We've then got very different coloured Deluxe Insecticons. And the Constructicons and Shockwave are there. So we've got a bit of a mix. We've got Wave 1 with a few newer figures that were starting to what well, they knew that they were going to appear. Let's have a look if there's any differences actually on the figure itself. So I'm going to carefully take this out. Let's see if it comes out. That one's had a bit of playtime, obviously you can tell. So nothing different there. That sticker isn't filled in. We've got a rub sign on this one. And we've also got T2, which I was expecting to be honest, but you see it's blocked out the Japan there. I was expecting the T2. Because, as I said, that's what most of the CJ were for Europe, including the UK. So, but you got made in France and it's blocked out Japan. So there we go. Main differences on this is just on the box. But I think it's really interesting. That's why I wanted to show you the catalogue at the time. Because it's teasing the newer figures that were going to be coming available very soon. We're going to stay with CJ and we're going to go on to the rare red foot variant of Optimus Prime next. OK, here we are then. Optimus Prime number six. This is the illustrious red footed Optimus Prime. So this is a full English box, although it was produced in France by CJ. Um, again, full English, English all on the top, English all around the back and underneath. But with this being the red feet version, and I may be wrong when I say this, but I've not seen another red feet Optimus Prime in a box unless it's got this bit at the bottom because obviously it wasn't made in every factory. So it's highlighted in a black box that it's made in Strasbourg, France by CJ Revel under license from Takara. I may be wrong. I've not seen it. I'm sure somebody would like to leave a comment if I've got that completely wrong. But uh, obviously they made other figures by CJ and other Optimus Primes. But the Red Feet one, I believe, came from that particular factory. So this is incredibly rare, obviously, in America. 
Um, in the UK, it's crazy. To, well, it's not common. That would be a bit of an extreme, but it's it's something that I definitely remember seeing as a child growing up, and it's something that pops up quite a lot on eBay over here. We are quite luckily lucky. Sometimes people advertise it and they don't realise it. So I mean, I know it's got red foot, but they'll just literally be selling it as an Optimus Prime. They wouldn't even realise it. I've seen on Facebook groups, Transformer Facebook groups, you know, this is very sought after, of course, by American collectors because it's just not seen that often. Before we have a look at the cab, let's have a look at the trailer. And again, we've got a T2 because it's CJ. And again, Japan is blocked out and you've got made in France. There won't be anything else different in there, but let's have a look at... I've even seen some people dub this figure as Dorothy. And there you go. That's because he's got his nice red slippers on. So let's transform him. I know I said I wasn't going to do this anymore, but for obvious reasons, just to stand him next to this guy. That is, oh, you can't even see it. That is the big difference there. There they are. There's the red feet. And yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. It's just, they are still die cast. You can see, unfortunately, there's a bit of paint chip in there. They are die cast. Everything else looks exactly the same. Maybe if I'm being really pedantic, I'm not too sure. The red looks a little bit brighter on the left-hand side guy. But of course, the main thing that we're looking for there is the red feet. So yeah, quite sought after, unless for that reason. I love the fact that there's so many different variants of this figure. There he is, the Dorothy of Optimus Primes with his nice red feet. So. Not much else different with regards to that. It's a standard T2 trailer. So what we're going to now, now do, we're going to move on to the last of the figures that was definitely released in 1984. And it is, of course, the original Japanese Takara one. And this guy's got the super launcher. So we're going to move on to him right now. Right then, here we go. So number seven, this is the Japanese Takara original version. And I suppose, again, you can say that this is pretty much where it started. And the main reason for that is, for those of you who don't collect Japanese Transformers or don't know, he is literally number one, the very first Transformer ever released. That's his reference number. As the figures got produced more and more and more, the, no the numbers went up, obviously. And then they even split them between. They had either a C and a number for a Cybertron, which was an Autobot, and then a D and a number for the Decepticons, who were known as Destrons. So the first thing you'll notice is the fact that the box is much smaller, even the polystyrene insert. If I just put a standard one behind it, you can see there's about an inch or so, even just the base bit that's higher. I know it hasn't got the flap, but it's much, much smaller. A uh, couple of things that they do change with the box is the fact they've got the transformation process underneath rather than on the top. On the top, it's just, again, really going to town telling you that it's Transformers and that it's number one. And another thing for people, if they're not aware, that in Japan, he wasn't actually even known as Optimus Prime. His name was Convoy. And of course, this all ties in with the old Battle Convoy that he was before he was, of course, a Transformer. So we've even got there the Takara thing and it's saying there 1982, which shows how long that the convoy was actually used and under prototype. On the back, we've got the battle scene again. We've got the tech specs, which look slightly different. We've also got um, the fact that on the back there, it's actually talking about how to, I suppose, use the trailer. The fact that it can be a repair bay, the fact that you can have that sticking out at the top while it's in truck mode. It's all it's all interesting and it's all really good, to be fair. This one, unfortunately, has seen better days, but let's have a look at it. There's a couple of brilliant, brilliant differences. I've got some paperwork here I'm going to show you in a second. But this one has the illustrious Super Launcher trailer. So in some of my videos, I've mentioned to you the fact that Basically, the safety standards were very, very different in the US and the UK compared to what they were in Japan. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Here's all the parts. The parts are all, as I say, as normal. Roller, I'm going to keep him in there because this polystyrene's a bit... Yeah, it's seen better days. There's all the parts. The gun would obviously rest in there as well. That's just fallen out. Let's have a look at the instructions purely because they're completely different. So they fold out this particular way. It's in pink and black and white you've got the fact there that again you're building everything up and it also shows you there how to use the trailer in different modes and then there's nothing on the back of this at all 
And again, there is the reference that it is number one. Let's have a look at a catalogue then, because these catalogues, again, are brilliant. You've got this piece of artwork that we'd have seen before. And then what we've got is the fact. I love this, it's brilliant. So here it is. We've got Cybertrons there. There they are. I obviously can't read any of them numbers or references, but you can pretty much work it out. This is all series one and it is versus. So Cybertrons are Autobots versus Destrons. Now, yes, that is Reflector. He wasn't a mail away exclusive in Japan. He had his own box. He's on my wish list. And you'll notice that Megatron does not even have a fusion cannon. He has no other attachments. He just has a sword and the standard gun that comes with the rest of well, rather than, as I say, all the stock and everything, they are the original two. One other quick thing that's on the back that I wanted to show you again is this brilliant, brilliant bit of artwork that would have been on display, I believe, in the toy shops. There you go. Stunning bit of artwork. So there we go. Let's show you the actual differences now then with the toy. So this is probably just going to fall out. The trailer has a difference and the cab has a difference. The cab might be harder to detect or see shall we say because it literally just has a darker red so this is the takara one you can see this has been played with that's one of the pitfalls of this the legs are so so loose let's see if i bring this next to it does it look darker it is a darker red so the cab is a darker red there that is the difference with the cab and now this is crazy this is what we want to see this is the difference so the trailer itself if you're after a takara one is a number six and nothing's blocked out because this is of course made in japan right so i'm going to set this up then i'm going to lift the camera up i'm going to pull this out if you've not seen this already on the specific video i did of this figure this is quite something <laughs> it really is to give you an idea there is the launcher and for those of you who are not sure or can't remember look how far that launches down i'm going to show you here's my standard sage or standard hasbro they're all the same there's the launcher there's the launching platform wow difference as you can see is crazy so let's put this to the test and let's show you it so let's see bear with me two seconds in fact what up no i think you can pretty much make that out if i turn them that way maybe bring this up a little bit higher tilt this down there we go a little bit more maybe right I'll push them back so here is standard roller is it clicked in that's clicked in let's press that button at the back not really going very far is it you can already see this look how far back that goes that's into position oh bang that literally landed across the other side of the room let's do that once more let's click it into place there we go and huge huge difference for those of you who didn't see first and foremost that is both of the launchers released so the takara one is right at the way to the bottom of that platform the standard other one is just to there so there you go two differences with the takara one's just a really subtle paint color difference and of course the other one which you've just seen is the quite remarkable and again very different safety standards in fact while we're here let's have a look at this let's see if the missiles are the same i'm sure they are because again they didn't take all the springs out they never neutered them i've not done this yep that's got some venom in it as well as we'd expect all of the launching mechanisms all of the springs they weren't neutered for safety standards they were pretty much full throttle. So there we go, guys. That was the Takara release of Optimus Prime. We're moving now to 1985. There's still generation one versions of these particular figures. I'm going to now move on to the gig. So the Italian version, I'm gonna come back with him right now. Okay, so here we are, Optimus Prime number eight. And as I mentioned just before this, we've now moved on to 1985. And the reason this was 1985, and that was due to, as I say, licensing issues. And there's a big, big difference with this. And it's to do with the firing missiles that none of the gig figures, none of the gig toys were allowed firing missiles. So I'll show you what they gave them instead to use. And again, if you've not seen or are not familiar with gig, um, 
it's quite funny to be honest but let's have a look at the box to start off with so there is the logo there for gig or gig as it's pronounced i suppose natively um, this is the italian variant so all the box will be in italian what they did was they literally they took the name transformer and these were all again officially licensed via takara eventually and that's why even on the smaller boxes it will say on it licensed by takara so underneath we've got the normal standard pictures but again it's all in italian what they've also done is they've changed the name in italy they changed the name to all of the figures he's now known as commander and ironically or funnily enough ultra magnus is actually known as convoy right we're going to spin him around to the back and here we go because this is 1985 um we've actually got a different battle scene so what we've got here funnily enough this is more commonly used with the 1986 figures um we've got of course metroplex and triptych on there the two titans in their base modes we've got there the fact that it says geek again and there is your four points i'm going to take this one out of the box to have a look at it and let's do exactly that now there are actually two variants of the geek um, transformer optimus primes this is the only one that i've got and these really unsightly things you can see at the top these stoppers I kid you not, but what they gave you instead of missiles. So huge rubber bungs on the end of it as, as exactly that, as stoppers to stop you from hurting each other, to stop you from launching them. Um, I've done some videos on some of the constructor cons in the gig boxes. And again, they come with these stoppers. So anything that fired, and again, that's probably the reason why a lot of the figures came out a bit later. They had to pass their certain safety standards. We're going to quickly now have a look at the actual figure so the actual figure itself this one is now a number six i think rollers inside yeah he's nice and safe in there all bunged up lovely stopping rock, rock rolling around and then the figure again we've got the rub sign now because it's 85 and there's no other differences with that at all i might as well just show you this quickly so everything was still the same inside you had this you've got the larger launcher as well but what we've got is these stoppers here. Not really the same, is it? Not really the same at all. And they see they didn't even fire. They can't fire. They just basically neutered it. Neutered it, neutered it. So let's take that back out. Fold it up. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy how they were released differently everywhere else. But there you go. This was the Italian version. The 1985 version of G1 Optimus Prime. There is one other 1985 variant of this figure coming up. And that is the MB version. That is coming up next. Okay, my apologies. Just very quickly before we move on to the MB version. I felt obviously rather than just discussing it, I might as well show you. So, and the reason why I want to show you this is because this is going to segue into another version that I actually do not have. So as I mentioned, the Ultra Magnus, funnily enough, was now known as Convoy. And there it is. I just wanted to show you that. But the other reason, as I say, is because there is two gig or are two gig versions, shall we say. And this is crazy as well, because funnily enough, this Optimus Prime had the standard rubber tyres and die cast toes. But there is a gig version of Optimus Prime where he sports the plastic wheels and the plastic toes, which is basically exactly the same as the Ultra Magnus cab as well that was released around about, you know, 86. So I just wanted to share that with you. And rather than just discuss it, I can actually show you the Convoy Ultra Magnus as well. So we are now definitely going to be coming on to the MB version. Right then. So here we are. Version number nine, 1985. This is again a Generation 1 Optimus Prime figure. And this came out, as I've just said, it came out a year later. And the main reason for this is, again, due to licensing issues, uh, because basically across mainland Europe, Hasbro merged with Milton Bradley. And of course, that's what the MB is. And of course, most people will know that Milton Bradley are normally, I suppose, known for making board games and things like that. But what they did was they managed to acquire Joustra, which is, again, a pre-Transformers toy company, to basically influence and get 
transformers across mainland Europe. So like the Seijay with the different language, this also has the different languages on it as well. So it took quite a long time to get the licensing and to start to release these. So these are quite short supply. So again, these are really quite rare. And again, they're mainland Europe. So you've got four languages again at the top. So you can see we've got English, we've got Spanish, we've got German and we've got French, I think, looking at this. Is that French? Yeah, there we go. German, Dutch, Spanish and French. So there you go. No English language on the back at all. And again, it just proves exactly what I was just trying to say there, that this was Hasbro and Milton Bradley's attempt to get the Transformers out across mainland Europe. And that's another reason why it was so late. Um, again, this is, as you can see, unfortunately, one of my most, should we say, heavily played with figures. Let's have a quick look inside, though. The figure itself... Um, let's have a look at the differences. Now, we've already seen um, very similar. I think it might be exactly the same, the toy catalogue of this, with the fact with the Sage 04 language. Um, but let's have a quick look at that in a second. And it is, yeah, it's exactly the same again. So you've got the four language. You've got the fact there that Jetfire was going to be the Autobot commander. I should perhaps do, a, I suppose, in educational video on mb transformers but i don't own enough to warrant doing that just yet but yeah crazily enough jetfire was going to be the commander um and i'll elaborate a bit more on that in a different video but here is optimus prime rollers inside and we've now got again t2 because of course mainland europe there is the t2 trailer with regards to the actual cab nothing different at all but what i like the fact here is what people used to do is of course put the fists inside there so the main difference with the mb really is only the box um and again because they were such a short production run they are very very sought after the mb variants of figures um and yeah they, they're so scarce um for that reason for exactly that reason they don't pop up very often at all and it was just as i say hasbro's merging with milton bradley uh, after they acquired the Joustra company to distribute Transformers across mainland Europe. So there's 1985 completed. We're moving on to 1986 and I've got a couple of nice surprises and treats coming up for you right now. We might as well start with one I've done a big video on already. So I'm going to show you the poster again. This is the Japanese exclusive Goodbye Convoy set. Right then, so here we go. This is exactly what I've just said. This is the Japanese exclusive Goodbye Convoy set. And this came out in 1986. And it's basically all to do with tying in with, of course, the Transformers movie that came out in that year. Now, funnily enough, and I suppose ironically enough, in Japan, the movie didn't actually, the cartoon movie didn't make it out to Japan in 2006. And that's a lot of the reasons why their stories are completely different, i.e. in Victory, the cartoon, you know, you've got Wheeljack and Perceptor in it. But obviously the rest of the world sort of knew that Optimus Prime had gone away and Japan had to sort of follow suit and they did a goodbye convoy set so fortunately as we know these three characters all perished in the particular movie i wish i could make out exactly what that says there it was it's got yen but it's got six nine eight and then it looks like it's been ripped off i would imagine it was quite a bit more than that so we're going to spin it around what we've got is these three figures inside we've got the three tech specs we've of course got the 86 battle scene there with again your two titans or bases of metroplex and triptychon in their base mode and again we've got a lot of the figures from 86 we've got octane we've got ultra magnus there movie characters springer etc and then we've got a lovely little thing there which is usually missing which is the goodbye um i suppose it's collector's card isn't it and i'm going to very carefully take this out because this optimus prime again is different to the others and I think it's just a nice touch that they did this. They did do this intentionally. Um, there's all the paperwork and stuff at the back. Right, if I can tilt this without them all tipping out. Brilliant, there we go. So there's Optimus Prime. The, here is the poster that I know so many people have already asked to see, so I will show you that again. Oh, there's Red Alerts missiles. Now, the instructions and everything are basically exactly the same as what they were in his first edition so here it is it's exactly the same except it's folded differently because obviously it can fit into a different box 
so you don't need to spend much time looking at that but what we have got and i know that people like to see these so i don't like to disappoint we've got different catalogs because it was later on right let's just get rid of the rest of all the instructions so obviously i've got mirage red alerts instructions there is your little goodbye mini certificate as well the tech specs are all in there again if they packaged it the optimus primes gun fits nice and snugly there i'm just going to move this back a bit to give us a bit more space so we've now got the quite familiar pamphlet of the mail away so this is different so these will surprise you these are the mail aways for japan and yes dirge was a mail away for japan so were all of these so i know and again most of us know the omnibots were all mail aways but warpath ratchet and cosmos were all mail aways in japan look at that how clever is that there they are alt mode into their robot mode just lovely little gimmicks lovely little things that they just did just made everything better there's the omnibots in their robot mode there's the list of all the figures and how much it was going to cost and then on the back we've even got where it's discussing the stars play set so you can send off for that as well so this was the stars and mail away catalog that came with this particular figure then we've got a 1986 japanese toy catalog stroke checklist this is brilliant they've got loads of things on here i'm not going to spend too much time on here just want to show you the main ones for those of you who don't know scramble city which it says there was the name of the cartoon that was airing in japan at that particular time and it of course referred to mainly these your combiners because you can of course scramble all the limbs so you've just got the first two there you've got superior and defensor we've then got basically all the mini bots and the triple changes they're not all the mini bots there but these are the later ones that released we've got the cassettes for blaster blaster and perceptor the dinobots again has got the red face slag ultra magnus is there rodimus prime movie figures and then moving quickly to here some things that you just never see look at them for watches magnus looks like superior galvatron exclusive watches and then if you spin it round, and this again just proves i've mentioned this a few times in japan of course they were the main makers of transformers um there was always more autobots because they preferred the heroes rather than the decepticons and there's your list of cybertrons your autobots there's your list of destrons and then here on the back you've got the destrons but it's a much much smaller amount you've got predator king you've got your triple changes i'm just going to come across here like this there's your scramble city combiners there is of course Triptychon and there is your movie figures and again notice there with the Seekers there is no Dirge because he is a mail away. Right there we go that's enough for them let's have a look at the actual differences of the Optimus Prime on this set and these are nice subtle differences to be honest. Um, can I get this out without knocking everything over? Hopefully so. What we've got I'll tell you as I'm doing it is they change the colour of the windscreens in the cab and they change the color of the windscreen well i suppose it is a windscreen isn't it in the part in the trailer as well so i'm just going to move that out of the way here is the lovely lovely cab and can we make out hopefully with the lights that these oh this is so stiff don't want to do this i'm just going to do one oh no carefully ah this is i think this is unplayed with to be honest so there's the windows see there's a blue tint to it i probably should have just done that why didn't i do that <laughs> there's your blue tint is it visible yeah there's your blue tint there's your standard standard windows there yeah you can see a big difference there so there's the blue tint in that and that was done especially and only for this release so i'm going to carefully transform him back and then they did the same as well with the mini unit or the repair bay. I'm not too sure what his actual name is, to be honest. Inside here, you can see straight away that that is the bluey green colour. So there are your differences. It again is a super launcher because it's a T6, hopefully. Yep, not even a T6, just a six trailer. So there's your differences. So for this very special edition optimus prime 
they had them differences intentionally obviously before i pack this up i know that people want to see the poster so i'm going to show you the poster but then i promise you at the end as well of this particular clip itself what i'll do is i will pan nice and slowly over it and add it as another mini clip mini video because again it's just something brilliant that this particular set had and it's got literally up to 1986 all of your autobots your cybertron heroes there is metroplex at the back i'm just going to unfold this quickly off camera so i can slide this across and then again as soon as i finish the video i'm going to be able to film it nice and slowly for you so there they all are this is all of your autobots all of your cybertrons all across the bottom and the top there's your combiners this is the exclusive poster that came with this particular gift set so what i'm going to do now then i'm going to go to a very quickly other video just so you can have a look at that in a bit more detail and then we're going to come back with the last of the 1985 um oh sorry yet yeah, ones which is of course the iga one Okay, so we're on to the next variant, and this is, of course, the Mexican, the IGA variant. And I know we've just looked at Goodbye Convoy set, which was from 1986, and I've mentioned that this was the last one produced in 1985, which it is. But also, although this was only produced in 1985, it was actually released subsequently right up to the years 1990. So let's have a look at this. And for those of you who don't really know Mexican Transformers, you're in for a treat because some of these are just literally unbelievable. And this is no pun intended, but you won't believe your eyes with some of the things that you're going to see with this. I'm going to try and give you as much of the backstory as I can as we go through it. So there is the IGA Plastico's logo, which means that basically the toy company that was made it. Like I said, Gig made them in Italy. These made them in Mexico. And these were under license at first. There we go. Under license from Hasbro Bradley. Now, first and foremost, if you look at the box, the box is of a much, much poorer quality. It's a different cardboard. The print quality is really, really bland. There's no real sheen to it at all. It just feels different. It feels cheaper. And of course, there's no robot points. So... As I was saying, in 1985, they were commissioned to make these particular toys and they were all officially licensed. But then they started to have a few problems, shall we say. Now, this particular version is a good version, to be honest. So we're going to slide this out um, and I'm going to show you some examples of some of the problems in a second. But basically, because they had so many problems and they'd had so many, they built so many surplus, these particular figures managed to find their way over to Europe, the Mexican variants, and these were released literally right up until 1990. And you may be asking, how do we know this? And I'm going to show you in a second. But first and foremost, here is the Mexican Prime. And as I've just said, this is a good one. So you'll see what I mean by a good one in a second. I'm just going to move all the parts out of the way because, again, the parts, funnily enough, are no different. The instructions, though, of course, are just in mexican and again it's in a much much i suppose the best word i can use is substandard paper it's just it just feels cheap there's no sheen on it it's just normal it just feels like normal paper that they printed it out on and of course it's in the mexican language let's have a look at the actual toy itself though and what i'm saying is again this is this is quite a good one to be honest um I can't wait to show you the other variants. The other variants I've got the Mexican ones there, they are loose. So I can't wait to show you. Let's have a look at the trailer. And the trailer number is, doesn't have a number, it just has a T. And you can see we've now scrubbed out Japan and France and everything. We've just got Takara and then Hasbro, which are just there. And of course, now if we have a look at this, this is again, this is a real good quality one to be fair. There's no rub sign on it. And what I mean by a good quality one is, 
I'm just going to quickly open you this. And there is what you would expect to be your normal standard Optimus Prime. So, again, <laughs> I'm going to basically just go back over what I've just said there. A lot of the figures they did have problems with. Some of these go down in folklore because they're just they're just crazy so this is i've got two variants now two variants of mexican transformers and um these are both optimus primes let's just bring the camera down just a little there we go so if you have a look at this now i'm going to transform this guy in front of you luckily it's just an optimus prime and it won't take too long but that's not a joke that is literally <laughs> that's how they painted his eyes and again, that's not a joke. You got to if if you open this on Christmas Day, or for your birthday, or a special present, you just wouldn't be happy with it. I can't help but laugh when I see this. So, I mentioned that they basically were only they were releasing them right up until 1990. How do we know? Because they had so many problems. Here is a sealed jump starter that I've got Mexican, and you can see it's got the date 1989 on it. There is the IGA logo and funnily enough you can see there they're a bit red paint happy so they painted his face here's some more examples of things they did wrong so this is of course top spin spin it round you've got top spin but a picture of twin twist on the back other things that they did wrong they were completely red paint happy they used to be honest the reason why these have got stickers on is they used lead paint in these so what we had to do what the people in the uk did when these variants came in this was a brand new sealed figure even though it had been opened like this and i just want to show you this very quickly i know it's an optimus prime thing but i just want to show you how i suppose red paint happy they are that just to basically prove that this isn't a joke somebody hasn't customed this or made a mess this was a brand new but this was literally still sold as brand new astro train because what they had to do is they had to check the paints if they were toxic. And there you go again. That is a brand new, unused, as good as sealed contents Astro Train. So even into the very, very late 80s, these products were still seeping through. The jump starters in question. There's your standard one. There's your Mexican one with the red face on it. And the last one, just to prove again that it's not a joke, is there's your Mexican one. And there's your standard one. I've done quite a few more videos on Mexican Transformers if you're interested because they still blow my mind. So there you go. You can see um, why they weren't officially licensed by Hasbro in Europe, especially. Um, but at the time in 85, officially licensed in Mexico to produce these. Anything after that and anything that has made its way into Europe was not officially licensed by them. Right. So... This is, funnily enough, another, and I said you wouldn't believe your eyes, it's just ridiculous. Here is another Mexican Prime variant. This also has the red eyes, but can you see how light blue his head is compared to his? So this one has a light blue plastic. And again, this is much more noticeable if I open up their chest canopies like so. So here's the light blue variant. There's the dark blue variant. So they had, do you know what? I've got no idea what was going on in their factories. I used to work in factories and I think their quality control was literally out of the window. So there you go. That is the three known variants, I believe, of the Mexican um, Transformers. I've got one of these loose ones trailer and that also is just a T. So unbelievably, there you go. <laughs> I'm still laughing at them right now. I just felt sorry for the kids, as I say, who managed to open these. So now we are left with one more 1986 um, transport well, version of Optimus Prime that was released. And that will be taking us up to number 14. So I'm coming back to you with number 14 and I'm going to just pack these away. Right then, I'm back. And yes, this is just a plain box. And this is probably one that you've not seen any of the pictures or anything I've ever done. Uh, purely because, it, again, the box is nothing to shout home about. It's incredibly boring. Um, it literally is a cardboard box. It reminds me of something like the Generation Select figures now. So you've got, you know, a really special figure just inside a 
plain cardboard box. So American viewers may notice and recognize this. Everywhere else you may not. Prime enthusiasts may notice it or know what it is. This is the mail away variant. So this was only available in 1986 and in the United States. It cost you $21, 50 and five robot points to get it. I'm intentionally not mentioning anything about the address on the front. Um, it would be amazing if anybody did know that particular gentleman and if he even still lived there. So this again, 1986, I'm just sliding it out nice and careful. There's a bit of paperwork I've got in here as well to show you. I and mean, it is, it's just a plain cardboard box. But as you can see, there we have another beautiful, beautiful Optimus Prime. This is pretty much untouched as well. Someone's put the stickers on it. What I need to show you with this, the thing that makes it, I suppose, so special is this. This is the certificate that you got that came with it. The movie edition certificate. There you go. You can just have a quick read of that yourself. And because it's a bit later on, the catalogues you've got in here again are the fact that you can send off for more mail aways. These are totally different. We've got Sunstreaker, Ratchet, Omnibots, Wheeljack, Mirage. Yep, this is a bit like the Japanese one, obviously, but it's in the US ones now. I've not seen that before, and that's changed to Thundercracker. The beauty of doing some of these videos is the fact that I haven't even open some of these myself so let's just have a quick look at what else is in here it is complete we'll have a look at the trailer in two seconds there's that piece of paper again which details it pushing out we've got an unused sticker sheet and we've got the same instruction booklet what i love about the instruction booklet is that it's still full color and what i mean by that is the 84 figures that were then re-released under the classics line they didn't use the full color either I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but because we're in 1986, we have, of course, got the 86 toy catalogue, which is your checklist as well. And that's for both, of course, the Autobots and Decepticons. Again, for people who are really, really interested in these, I've done videos on these checklists as well. Um, and the only reason I'm not spending much time on this is because I've done one already on that. What I am going to spend a bit of time on though in a second is something else that came in the packet of this. I can't confirm if it came with the actual figure, but I've never seen it before, especially being a UK resident. So there's some more of the parts. Let's just quickly have a look at this. And because the mail away is totally different, you've got a number let me look at the lights that's a number five isn't it there we go we've got a number five trailer and then in the back we've just got all the parts and roller etc so the bit that i wanted to show you it reminds me a bit of the fold out poster that came with the goodbye convoy set so whether or not it did again i can't 100 percent um clarify that but what we've got here is it's a book basically about Optimus Prime and the movie. And it's here, it's, it's about this particular offer here. Look, you won't find these items in store today. You can, it's the mail aways basically. You can send off for the mail aways. I'm gonna again do what I did with the Goodbye Convoy set. Here you go, see them in the movie, play with them at home. And there you've got all the information about the mail away so of course the mail aways in america were reflector as well as well as the stars set and then the best thing right there is exactly what i just said 21 dollars 50 and five robot points and you need a movie stub and then you've got this poster that's on the back of it it's a movie poster it's brilliant and again i've not seen this anywhere so i'm presuming that it came with this um, what I'm going to do now, before we move on to the very next one, I'm just going to do what I did with the Goodbye Convoy set and pan very quick, very sorry, slowly and quietly over this for those people who want to read it themselves. Coming on to that now. Okay, you'll have to excuse the glare, but because I'm going over it nice and slow, I'm sure with the use of the pause button, you'll be able to read what you needed to at some point.
And then it does look like there might have been something else on the top of this, which is probably the form maybe that people sent off. But then here is that beautiful poster. Yeah, it must be unicorns missing from the top. Okay, there we go. Two variants left. Coming up with the next one right now. Right then, here we go. So here is number 15 and we are now up to 1990. And these are what's referred to or known as the Gold Box Classic Editions. These were released in the UK, Europe and in some Australasian countries. Ironically enough, not in the US and not in Japan. So what we've got now is we've got the Generation 1 Optimus Prime figure. We've got the really striking but i think quite beautiful gold box and this particular one is the spanish variant and you can tell it's the spanish variant because the writing is all in spanish so there we go um again it's it's still an optimus prime the problem with this is is at the back i really really don't like that battle scene I could be pedantic and say it's better than the mail away one, but basically what this is, I suppose they all were, they were all adverts anyway, but this is advertising the figures that came out in the classics line of figures, which we can see there. You can also see that the robot points are now down to two. And again, we've got his tech spec, but we've got some Spanish writing. Everything else is exactly the same. Let's have a look at the figure inside. And of course the trailer number. And there's a couple of slightly different things to do with the paperwork as well. Um, so I can just show you there. I do also want to thank you guys right at this particular point who are still watching. I know this video has gone on far longer than even I thought it would go, to be fair. Right, there's the parts, there's the pieces. There is Roller, and here we go. So yes, this is what I was pretty much talking about earlier as well. So you can see, there we go, the instruction booklet. It is in colour which is actually quite nice. I wasn't expecting it to be, so I can made a mistake obviously in the last one because the rest of them, all the other Autobot cars and Decepticons, they are not in color at all. So that surprised me probably as much as it did you guys, but there you go, you can still tell it's slightly different. So, and it's all in Spanish. I'm not gonna show you too much of this, but obviously with it being 1990, we've now got the Action Masters and the pretenders as well so i'm going to be doing videos on this particular flyer soon action masters oh no it's all action masters shall we say action masters and micro masters there we go so that's what came with this one and of course the reason why it's doing it is because they've changed the font so you can see how transformers the font has changed there to exactly that font there right let's have a look then and see which trailer number it is some of these as well actually had gray rollers again it's believed and again someone can clarify or confirm this for me if they want i've read it on a few websites that basically that when they reissued them like this they just literally got together all of the i suppose optimus prime parts from everywhere and just literally managed to I don't use the word concoct, but near enough, but um, basically, yeah, collate everything together. And just some of them are known to be a mishmash of parts. So some of them may have grey rollers, etc, etc. Right. So here we are. We now have just again the standard T2 trailer. But have a look at the stamp. It's completely gone. So there you go. That's the difference with these particular other versions there's nothing else different there at all everything's exactly the same so we're going to come back with the final variants that i have again it's the final variant i have i know that there's a few other variants that i've pretty much discussed as well um but yeah we're going to come with the final variant right now and then do a quick roundup at the end Okay, so here we are, and this is the final, my 16th variant of Generation 1 Optimus Prime. And again, it's a nice gold box version. We can see, though, that this time it is full English. So the differences for this on the box are it says original Optimus Prime on the corner and at the top, whereas the Spanish one just said Autobot Leader and it just had Autobot there. Um, again, yeah, it's completely sealed. It is graded. And this, I believe, is from Australia. I did mention earlier that the gold boxes were available in mainland Europe, the UK and Australasian countries. And this originally was sold at a shop known as Grace Brothers. And I've never heard of that. Again, please leave a comment where this shop is. But it was 39 and that could be Australian dollars. 
95 cents i can't tell for those of you who are interested it's got a grade of 85 we'll just do a quick once around but it's no different to the other box you've just got a picture of him in his robot mode in his trailer you've got unfortunately the very very boring battle scene on the back but yeah there you go so that as i say physical things to show you i'm going to come back very quickly in a second briefly just to do a quick roundup but this concludes the 16 different variants of generation one optimus prime that i've got so i'm going to come back very quickly just to round it all up for you thanks very much guys right then so just to round all this off and finish it off i just of course want to say a huge thank you to everybody um the purpose of this video mainly was of course to raise awareness um help educate people out there on what particular variants that they've actually got i get loads of questions about that all the time but also mainly i wanted to bring back some nice memories i can still remember fondly opening my optimus prime way back in 1984 and i think due to you know the fact that i've managed to get so many different variants hopefully that i've managed to get you know the one that you may have had as a child with the fact that we've got all the other ones there's still a few that i'm missing i know there is i don't you know claim to have them all there's still other variants that i am still actively searching for and looking for but i really really deep down hope that you guys enjoyed this hope you found it as i say interesting enough to stick through all of it and yeah i hope it you know hope you find it useful you do use it for yourselves in your hunt in your search for your optimus primes and just just more than anything, that again, that it brought back some fond memories for you. So thank you very much for watching this video. I didn't intend it to be anywhere near this long. It was supposed to be um, quite a bit smaller. But so on the same hand, any constructive feedback, criticism, anything, let me know. I want to do something like this again when I've managed to find another couple of um, the variants that I'm still missing. And then do it properly, get it all right, make sure I don't make any mistakes. And yeah, then again, put it on here for everybody else to use as, as a... Um, as if we can, we can get a definitive guide to Generation 1 Optimus Prime figures. So thank you everybody for your assistance in this, making this, helping this, um, and everything that you're doing for me and the channel. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.